Right. Good morning. Special thank you to the Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Keys, for introducing me. Um, also, a special good morning to the Honorable Xavier Main, Minister of State, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Carl Karam, and I am the General Manager of iCreate Institute. For those of you who don't know the iCreate Institute, we are a creative and digital training institution in partnership with the UCC. We launched in 2017, and since then we've done a lot of work. We've been to different islands throughout the Caribbean. We've trained individuals throughout the Caribbean. We went public earlier this year, and our student population has now exceeded 2,000 individuals. Before we get into the full presentation, I believe it's very important for us to connect as individuals, and I believe the best way to connect with individuals is to share a little bit of yourself. I'm really from the parish of St. Mary. I made my way into Kingston. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I'm a little country boy. Came into Kingston at the age of 12 and attended Arden High School. And... While I was there, there was a big ask of me as a teenager when I was 15 years old to decide my future. They said, choose nine subjects that will determine your career path. A lot of my peers were okay with this. I was a little perturbed. I was concerned because I did not fully understand industries, and I was always concerned with the future. I knew enough, because I did history, that what exists today will not necessarily exist tomorrow. So after meeting with my counselor, meeting my parents, meeting with friends, anybody I could meet with who could give me some guidance, I just bundled up some subjects together. So I had a little bit of the sciences, a little bit of business, I had a little bit of the sciences, a whole mess. And then... Went through, I did my CXEs, I did really well. I got a good amount of ones. And then I made my way to UE. Going into UE, they asked you to choose your major. I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I chose management studies with a focus in entrepreneurship. Why? Because I thought it was flexible. Because I was still confused. I didn't know where I was going. So I said, you know what? With a course like this, I can go left, I can go right, I can go all over the place. And in my second year where I said, you know what? Maybe this college thing isn't working out. And I always tell this story. I always tell individuals about um, my journey at UWE. I went to a class with a gentleman who I hold in very high esteem by the name of Dr. Kadewami Knife. And every time I see... Um, Every time I see Dr. Kadawam and I, I say, sir, you know, you saved my life. And he was like, yeah, yes. All right, thanks, Fireball. Because he's a, yeah. Every, if you know Dr. Knife, you know he's a, very, he's a very eclectic person. And I don't think to this day he really, he's really aware of what he did for me. Because I remember in the first class, when I went into the classroom, the student said, boy, I'm just going to do that class. It was introduction to entrepreneurship. I'll never forget that. And while in the classroom, students came in. It was part of my my core. And people said they did it as a free lecture because it's easy. And they said, I came in here because I just want a quick A, but I heard this guy's lazy. I said, why did they say that? They said, he lets the students just go through the material pr and present and give them a grade. And then I remember when he walked in, came in with his locks, he took out his MacBook, he went down and he greeted everyone. And Normal, it's, it, it, it's, it, um, it's a norm for lecturers that they interact with the class um, during the first class. And a student was bold enough to say, sir, I heard you're very lazy. I heard you make all the students do the work. And I remember his face. He pursed his face and he looked. And he said, that's what you heard? He said, yes. I said, all right. Here's what I can do. I'll never forget this. This was, this was a defining moment in college for me because this is what ensure that I did not drop out and brought me to where I am today. And he said, students, this is what I can do for you. 
I can come up on the board right now and I run through the notes and teach you everything. At the middle of the semester, you get a mid semester that will be 20% of your grade. And then I can give you a final, I can give you a project that you go home and do in a group, and that will be 30% of your grade. And then set a final exam and you do 50% of your grade. Just like every other course. Or what I can teach you is how to do research on your own, find material for yourself, and work on initiative and develop critical thinking. class passed just like how you passed and he said the reality is everything that you learn here today will be irrelevant by the time you graduate and right there he connected with me that was what I was looking for I wanted I was aware that the information that is sometimes shared today will not be relevant tomorrow and that is technology and what I want you to gain from my presentation today because the truth is I have a lot of information and this is a topic that I'm very passionate about and I want you to observe patterns and perspective. Because, yes, as a country boy, you get a lot of the gems growing up. Old people tell me, not, there is nothing new under the sun. And people say technology is new, but the, but the reality is there is a framework at play here. And that's what we're going to explore today. So how to find your place in the new world. Welcome to the fourth industrial revolution. How many of you are fully aware what the fourth industrial revolution is or what it has in store for us? Can I sh see a show of hands? Panel, you're invited also. You're all aware. All right, awesome. The, the best way sometimes to see where you're going is to know where you're coming from. And I think my high school teacher, Miss Pinto, will be very proud of me right now if she saw me going through a slide like this that has to do with history. So when you look at the first industrial revolution, um, we were introduced to mechanization, steam-powered machinery. So this was a time when manual hand labor was, was at the forefront of everything that we did. So men had to use axe to chop trees, mining was done, men with picket shovels and all that stuff. And this is where steam power came in. So imagine a period where an in the first engine was a pressure cooker. Can you imagine that? I don't know about you, but I have a better appreciation for oxtail now. Um, the second industrial revolution, this... Uh, when we talk about that, we think about mass production, we think about the assembly line, we think about factories, the expansion of cities and transportation, more resources becoming available to individuals. And then when we go to the third industrial revolution, 1969, there was automation, there's the internet, there's electronics. And what you realize, the first pattern here is that all of these revolutions are 100 years apart. Did anybody notice that? All right, awesome. I heard that. Yes, that's enough. What we also want to observe is that each revolution was more aggressive than the first. Did any, anybody else notice that? All right. With the dawn of the fourth industrial revolution, going back to my story about being aware and thinking about the future and being asked to decide my life at 15. I, I think we're now at a stage where it's okay for you students to decide because we're all connected now. Back in that time, I couldn't, it wasn't easy for me to go on a Google and look up careers. That information wasn't readily available. But now it is. As a teenager, you can decide, all right, if I just want to make a lot of money, what are the highest earning jobs? What are the highest earning industries? And that puts us in a very advanced position for success. So, we we'll come back to the statement. If I knew, oh, oh, what was it? <laughs> if I knew then what I knew now, was was um, is a statement that a lot of individuals they throw around sometimes when they get to the middle age. They say, if I was in my twenties, I would have done things differently. All right. So, with the fourth, with the introduction of the fourth industrial revolution now. We realize that there is the elimination of hard labor, and now we're focused more on brains than brawn. 
But are we really in the fourth industrial revolution? Now, remember I mentioned the pattern about 100 years. We're not yet at 100 years. So there is the possibility that we might just be at the starting line. We might just be doing a false start and thinking that we're there. Because remember, this is the most aggressive industrial revolution to date. There, we, we have not even started to grasp what is fully in store for us. All right? So when you talk about blurring the physical and cyber digital divide, we think about technologies such as blockchain and fintech. Is anybody familiar with blockchain technology? Awesome. When you think about blockchain, blockchain, all right, to put it in clear perspective, blockchain was the origin of cryptocurrency. Am I connecting with you? If you remember cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency threw the world into pandemonium in the late 2017. What was happening was that a lot of banks were becoming concerned that individuals were creating their own, their own currency. Individuals were, who were broke were now amassing millions because of digital currency. But the driving force behind cryptocurrency was blockchain technology. Right there was an investment in technology that was, through it, that, that was, that was shifting um, the economic balance. The poor people were becoming rich too fast. Well, we're not going to get into economics, but I remember around that time, a lot of individuals, I, I, I personally invested. A lot of people were asking me, why are you investing if you don't understand it? What does it mean? What is this? And a whole lot of questions. And a lot of um, investors a lot older than I was, they were saying that it's a bad idea. And I will never forget there was an interview, a Canadian interview, with one of the wealthiest men from Jamaica, Michael Leach. And I'll never forget his words. They asked him, do you think cryptocurrency is rubbish? And he said, no, I wouldn't say it's rubbish. I just wouldn't invest in it. Would you not invest in it because it's rubbish? He said, no, I don't invest in things I don't understand. And I held on to that statement because he never said it was a bad idea. He simply said he did not understand it. Leaving, meaning he was open to interpretation. If he could fully understand it, that is something he could capitalize on. And that is something you need to be aware of. Remember, I was talking about perspective. Some of the most successful people, they share that perspective. They're not quick to dismiss change or, dis or dismiss anything that is new. They are open to interpretation. They're open to embrace it. Patterns and perspective. All right. So in the fourth industrial revolution, there are um, certain impacts that we want to discuss. In, ter in terms of industries, when we talk about the socioeconomic impact of of the fourth industrial revolution. When we think about companies like Airbnb and Uber, I sat down with a friend just last week and he was telling me about an Airbnb that he had. He was telling me about the earnings. All right? And right there, he was showing me that his earnings, he's, he, he already has a 9 to 5. This is something he does on the side. And his earnings for the middle of this month was already what a lot of individuals are taking home on a monthly basis. When we think about industries, Disney Plus, a lot of us grew up on Disney watching the Lizzie McGuire show or what is it, High School Musical, The Little Mermaid. And when you think about an industry, think about the cable industry. Disney is a major driver, a major driver for the cable the industry. And right now they're thinking that better, you know, streaming is now the, is now the new, it's, it's the new, it's new TV, it's new television. So they have taken their platform online. Netflix is, they're shaking in their boots because of what Disney Plus is coming to the forefront with. I mean, their, their, their collaboration with Marvel, their, their, their following, their fan base. And then we think about the government impact now. We think about the recent, the recent scandal with Cambridge Analytica who actually took the information individuals personal information to 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 utilize in a campaign and because of that there are new policies now gdpr policies that have integrated itself into into international legislations um scotland the usa no digital is in the law 
This did not exist five years ago. When you think about individuals, I've been to m many of these forums and I hear individuals tell you, don't keep up with the Kardashians. It's okay to keep up, you know. It's okay. But what you need to observe is, what you need to do is not consume. But think of ways that you can create. The youngest billionaire. This is somebody you need to pay attention to. What did she do to get here? Don't just look at the show, but observe the techniques, the patterns. Develop the perspective that allows you to observe the patterns that will allow you to succeed. To succeed. <laughs> <laughs> and then, master of ceremonies. There are a few times when I gave you a look, you weren't really sure, but you are getting into my presentation. When you talk about the internet of things, right now, if you go into courts, you can buy a smart fridge. Why do you need to connect your fridge to your mobile device? What is it that you need to tell your fridge to do? Um, lower the temperature, thaw your chicken. There are so many things that are, that, that are awaiting us in the sport industrial revolution. When you think about 3D printing, right now, sneakers are being printed, mass production, because nobody needs to, needs to assemble the, these, these materials. Click of a button, it's done. When you think about big data analytics, we're all connected. Right now, there are, I there are companies here in Jamaica that, knew, that knows exactly where we are, what we're doing, and what our demographic is. I kid you not, I work with them. Alright? And to finish up, come back to the question, how do I fit in? How do you fit in this new world? The acceptance of constant change. You have to embrace the fact that you can't slow down change, but how do you get on the train? So you, ask, you have to accept the, that the world is now digital. At iCreate, we have a lot of students who are coming in saying that we're doing digital for the first time. And they're scared. There is a general fear as to as to how do they start. They said, hey, I don't have any experience in digital. But the reality is, the groundwork has been done. Platforms have been built. Devices have been built. It is much easier to assimilate yourself into digital than it was 10 years ago. You don't need to learn programming language. You don't need to learn coding. You don't need to learn HTML or Java. Everything has been done for you. You can now create a website by going on a website and selecting, I want to create a website. How ridiculous is that? It's amazing. When you think about creation, creating as much as you consume, like the example with Kylie Jenner, a lot of the times we're on, we are connected online, but we're just consuming. The only way to earn is to create. What will you learn to create? Learn. A day will come when you will graduate, you'll walk up to the podium, High schoolers, you'll also graduate, but, but learning is a never-ending journey. We're always learning. We're all students here. I myself, I'm a student. I'm still a student. I'm still learning things every day. There are so many things I want to learn. But learning doesn't have to be a task. It can be fun. As mentioned earlier, once you've found your passion, you will continue to learn in that space. Because technology is always growing. It is always growing, and it will never slow down. As we saw in the patterns of the... Um, the industrial revolution. And with that, I'll just leave you with a few pointers. Right now, it's less brown, it's more breaks. Always observe the patterns. That's how you'll be able to position yourself at the forefront of the industry. The industry, we're still in the early stages. It's going to get a lot more aggressive because remember the pattern, 100 years and change is constant. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time.